Hi, I am Zane Timko. I'm very nervous, and I want to share with you how procrastination helps me concentrate. I'd like to say before I start, I love to procrastinate. There are normally there are three stages to my procrastination. The first stage is when I say I'm going to do something and that beautiful A plus is mine. Second stage, I can't work. Thirdly, all of these ideas rush to my head. And that's my brainstorming system. And that's how I concentrate for all the assignments that I do. I love to tell you a quick story. Once I wrote a whole 1,000 word essay on the Sunday, the day before it was due, at 11.30, on a car ride home from the vacation. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't ideal, but hey, I got it done with a sufficient grade. My point is, adults always want you to be working in order to produce the best possible product. That doesn't always work. You work when and how you work, as long as you get it done. Don't all adults say, do your work, la la la, nag nag nag. My best work is produced when I work at my own pace on my own timeline. During the first part of my procrastination, it is quite a good feeling. Not only does my mind think that I'm going to get that beautiful A+, it knows that I'll get that beautiful A+, and nothing is going to stand in my way. But eventually, I'll write the headline in a couple of sentences, and then eventually something sweeps over me, saying I'm not going to work because I don't have to. Sadly, I listen to that. <laughs> this brings me to my first scientist, pediatrician Kenneth Ginsberg, says that play is integral to being able to build resilience. And resilience is absolutely crucial to my future success and happiness. And this quote, unconstructed play, increases my creativity, and creativity is also integral to the work that I do. My second stage looks like this. I can't work. My mind goes on standby. It doesn't want to work. Or it can't concentrate. One of those. My mind has to find more interesting things to do to occupy it, because my mind will learn about what I want to learn about, whether it is relevant or not. This brings me to my second scientist, Frank Moss, the former head of MIT Media Lab. His studies show that today's problems cannot be solved without some serious creativity. And things like global poverty, climate change, and obesity epidemic, like I said earlier, need creativity to be solved. He proposes that in order to teach creativity, learning has to get messy. We teach classes in a very rigid manner, one after another. And very rarely do you witness a math or a science teacher or an English and a history teacher collaborating about their lesson plan, planning it together so it all makes sense. Maybe procrastination is just a messy display of what my brain has to go through to get ready to solve a problem. Now, let's say I'm picking the topic for my school project. I'll wander around the library and look at the books until I see something that catches my attention. Say that book title is Riding the Flume. What is a flume? So I'll spend the next 30 minutes researching flumes, design the flumes, flume technologies, how to mine the flumes, and flumes himself, or even if it's possible to ride flumes. So I have become an expert at flumes, flumes not technologies, flume strategies, being a flume miner, and if it is possible to ride a flume, which it is highly dangerous and cold, because they're normally based in Alaska for mining gold. Never mind. That was my brainstorming system right there. It was me meandering around the library, looking for something that caught my attention. Once that one thing did catch my attention, I think and research. By researching, I will see if it holds my interest. And if it doesn't hold my interest, I'll make sure to repeat this process until I'm sure the topic will hold my interest. Finally, I realized whatever I was doing, whether an essay or a book report, is due the next day. All these ideas rush to my mind, screaming at me. You are interested in me. You have been researching me. Why not do what your project is on me? Now, that's my brainstorming system. And all these ideas are yelling at me and screaming at me which one I should pick. 
Now, I can't really decide when I want to brainstorm or finish my procrastination stages. It may be the night before, maybe even a week in advance. I don't know when I want to work or not. I just do. Perhaps the most supportive research I have found comes from the University of Southern California. What I call procrastination, they call diffuse mental activity. <laughs> they encourage time spent daydreaming, remembering, and reflecting, and discourage parents and teachers from expending a lot of expending a lot of energy on kids to getting kids to pay attention, concentrate, or focus on the task in front of them. The modern day looks different from when most of you were kids. The problems and tasks on hand are bigger and better than just the regular worksheet. Maybe the modern day concentration looks different than the concentration back then. And procrastination is my concentration. Now that was a simplified way to decode my brain and describe the way it works. So, you may disagree with my methods and still believe that this kid is no good and doesn't work. That's okay. We all have our opinions. But I guarantee we will all have to tolerate it because I am not the only one that works like this. Thank you.